this is authenticating using MAC addresses. Now, why would we do that? Well, MAC address registrations allows devices that do not support WPA2 Enterprise or 802.1x features, uh, either or, and uh, it gives us the ability to authenticate those. Also, it eliminates us from having the user certificate. So if these are short-term users, very quick type deal, uh, we could use it for that. Or, like I said, for, for printers or other things that, that do not have a... a uh, WPA2 enterprise uh, capabilities uh, or simply does not have a browser to allow you to onboard the device. So we're going to do two different things. We're going to modify our existing uh, guest branch that you saw us configuring earlier that where we have them uh, configuring and actually getting a configuration as well as a certificate. Instead, we're going to simply allow them to authenticate uh, and connect and then, of course, uh, register their MAC addresses when it comes to that. So we're going to modify that. Then we're going to add a third option or a third tab that you saw in that split uh, uh, plugin, giving us the ability to have users select that and then ultimately being able to register MAC addresses or register devices there uh, and so we're going to show an example of how to do that as well. So with that being said, let's move on to our configuration. So we're going to go to the configuration tab. We're going to go to workflows uh, and then of course here you see our existing two workflows there. Uh, this is the corporate BYOD and of course the guest user. But this time we're going to actually modify the guest user. So in this case we're going to go in between step three and result and we're going to click and add a step or click insert a step here. And this time we're going to select to register the device with the MAC address authentication. So we're going to select this plugin. Again, these are all plugins that we can apply to our workflow depending on what we want to modify or what we want to emulate, uh, whether this be your existing environment, your existing flow that you currently do manually, or basically replacing some type of process. We can use these plugins to accommodate us and, and provide that same feel and process, except it's automated. So we're going to do that and push Next. We're going to have a new configuration for that. We're going to push next for that. And we're going to name this Mac registration. So that's already put in there, but we're going to go ahead and put it in there again. All right. And then we're going to scroll down and change a couple of things. First, we're going to go under the config shortcuts. Now, shortcuts give us the ability, if you have these devices already, uh, instead of us having to go and figure out the syntax and understand the syntax and everything else, we can immediately go into this, cl uh, click on this button, and it automatically populates the, the redirect URL, uh, post parameters, and so forth. And so it's just an easy way if these are the type of deployments that you have or controllers. If you do not, then uh, you will need to go look up the syntax and be able to configure those. But either way, it can be modified and, and adjusted. Uh, a couple of things that we want to modify here is, first of all, we need to identify our host name here. Uh, naturally, that is something that we need to uh, customize here. So we're going to delete that section, and I'm going to add in our uh, a, one of our, our uh, lab uh, controllers in the sense of ruckus training dot net all right so now we have we've specifically selected or chosen this one if you're using HTTPS as with many other uh, scenarios do know that uh, you need to use a URL name instead of an IP address there otherwise you could have some complications because of the certificate uh, and security also, we're going to set uh, check post. So we're going to click that here. And that simply allows us to use the post feature in HTML, uh, being able to gather that information. And that's what that's for. Uh, we are going to go check uh, the our check the box of post, like I said. Then we're going to do the allow continuation. We're going to uncheck that. So we're not going to allow them to do the, the continuation. Uh, and then we also want to kill the session, meaning that once they've done, once they've been registered and everything else, 
we do not want to allow them to continue on and we want to stop that session. So if they're going to register a new device or a different device, they'll have to go through the onboarding process again. And so those are the, the settings that we have configured there. Once we have configured what you see there, you can review other options, but uh, those are what we're going to set for this, uh, this particular example, and then we're going to push save. Now one thing to make note is that you can see now under our guest user, we do not have a result step. All right. Before that was automatically there, but because we have chose, chosen this particular plugin, it has modified the flow. So as a result, we're going to be registering the MAC address for this particular device and not issuing a certificate. Again, the certificate is going to be based on a, a WPA2, uh, and so therefore we want them to just be able to authenticate using a MAC instead of a certificate-based type authentication. Now, to be clear, we have modified this step, and so therefore we no longer issue a certificate to these users, but rather once they come through and they put in their voucher, we will basically capture and be able to gather that MAC address and then ultimately allow that user to authenticate using a MAC address instead. Uh, again, this is for devices, whether it be a very short term that we have users and we don't want to issue them certificates, we just want to get them out to an internet only type of connection, or the device does not support the 802. Uh, excuse me, WPA2 uh, enterprise, and that would be what we're modifying here. Now, the other thing that we want to do is, is give people an ability to manually enter MAC addresses. So manually uh, enter a MAC and, and register a MAC address. So what we're going to do is we're going to create in this split right here an additional split or additional option for users to choose from. So I'm going to click on the plus sign next to here, and it's going to give me an another option or another ability to add uh, a MAC registration here. So we're going to put in here MAC, pre-register MAC, how about? Identifiable name for us. We're going to push save. And then now you see there's a third option here. The all the options for the split, okay, and we've added this one uh, to that split. We're going to push done here. And now you see we have a third tab, and that third tab is pre-registered Mac. So we're going to click on that. It has its own flow that we're going to create here, and uh, we're actually going to add a step here. So we're going to click on insert step here. And it's important to note we're going to be using the same plugin, but we're going to use it in a different capacity. All right, so we're going to go in here. We're going to do the register Mac for authentication. If you recall, that's the same plugin we used earlier. Uh, but you're going to see that because of the settings that we're going to make, choose, it's going to have a different meaning or it's going to do a different process. So in this case, we're going to push next. We're going to create a new configuration. We're going to push next there. Again, here's our existing one. We could use that again if we wanted to have different results, but we're not. We're wanting to, to perform different functions within this, this branch split. And in this case, we're going to put pre-registered MAC here as well. And what we're going to do is come down to the behavior. And in this behavior, we're going to select, uh, select always prompt the user okay so uh, prompt the user right there and so therefore this way every time somebody uses that that branch or they select that branch they're actually going to be prompted to be asked to enter their MAC address one other thing we need to set too is the the uh, the SSID or the SSID that we want these particular devices to connect to so uh, this does two things one, it identifies the SSID that we want them to connect to, but secondly, it does mean that that's the only SSID that we're going to be using an authentication method of MAC, uh, of MAC authentication, okay? So if a user is coming in, uh, if they were to connect, try to connect to the SSID or try to connect to other uh, SSIDs that we do not want them to connect to, uh, that will not 
allow that device to authenticate using a MAC address and then ultimately uh, limits and protects those other SSIDs we don't want them to connect to. So this is just purposely saying when they connect to this SS SSID that I'm about to put in here, uh, then we will actually do MAC authentication on that SSID. So here I'm going to just call it James Gaming. Uh, and that is, again, SSID that I've configured on my controllers that that device could actually go out and connect to. If those names don't match, it's not going to function or work correctly. So at that point, I'm going to push Save. And now we can see, again, because we use the same plugin, uh, we have a register the MAC address here. And then ultimately, uh, we're going to be prompting that user for that MAC. Now, what I'd like to point out as well is if you remember earlier, we selected this register the MAC address. And because of the selection we chose, which was to register the MAC through the collection of what we're receiving th from the controller, this gives us a manual configuration. The behavior changed to ask for that MAC registration. So it still gave us a results option here. All right. So as a result, uh, it would we can still assign the information here if we so choose uh, and be able to uh, perform a yet a third option or a third way in which we want to handle this device or these devices based on them completing this particular branch. Now, because I would be creating a pre-registered Mac option here, more than likely they're using this device, using a different device other than the device they're wanting to actually uh, put on the network. And so we're really not going to come in here and create a result, but more just kind of a message. So if the person goes in, they register their Mac, they put in that manually, and then they push next, I want to be able to give them a message to say, hey, that was uh, registered successfully. You can move forward on connecting the device. Uh, it should be able to authenticate now that you've registered that Mac. So I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, creating another uh, plugin or select another plugin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down and look for the message, right? So we're going to go and display a message for that particular user. And this is, again, a plugin that we're using to uh, communicate to those users. We're going to push next. We're going to create a new uh, message from a standard template. So we're going to push next there. And we're just going to put registration success. Again, this is just a reference name. It's not uh, doing anything specifically, but we are going to be able to go down and create uh, the actual message that we're going to provide to that end user right here. So I'm going to put in this uh, the title, we're going to put hardware registration. And we'll just put something in here that the device Just putting in something here. So again, uh, I'm, I'm able to use this to basically explain to them or communicate to that user. So once they've registered that Mac, they push next, this is going to pop up and give them that information. So it helps to spell device correctly. Uh, and so ultimately, uh, anytime somebody successfully completes this branch, this is the information that they're going to receive. Now, a few other things that we're going to set up is we're going to uh, eliminate them from being able to back up to another, sort of eliminate them from being able to back and do red, multiple devices. We're going to not show the back button because what could potentially happen 
is if we've got this user wanting to register multiple devices and depending on the flow that we have. So if we have a voucher uh, previously to this workflow uh, and they were to go to this, they've gotten past that voucher. If we uh, had this checked, they could literally back up and, and register multiple devices opposed to, uh, you know, on that one voucher uh, because they've already passed that section within the workflow. So this, by uh, unchecking this particular box, that forces them to have to go through the whole workflow again if they're wanting to register or uh, configure a, another device. So we're going to uh, be able to uh, uncheck that and then that way we'll make sure that that particular user uh, has to go through the whole process again. Uh, and again, this is depending on your, your selection. If it is a case that you have no problem with them being able to do that, you could select the back button and allow them to register multiple devices there. Uh, but if it's a a pay for play type situation or something along those lines then you certainly want them to go back and have to register uh, each device uh, with a, a different type of voucher or a different voucher value. So we're going to save that and then we still have a result here so what we're going to do is, is we're actually going to insert a different result and that is that we're going to redirect the user okay that's what we ultimately want to do we don't want to assign them a certificate we don't want to assign them configuration or we're just simply doing Mac registration uh, and so therefore we're going to uh, uh, to change this to a redirect so we're going to insert a step again here And then we're going to look for the plugin of redirecting the user. We're going to select that option, push next. We're going to use a new redirect. If it is a case that we had an existing, we do have one here. But if we were to want a specific one, we'd select new or we could use a different one. So once we've registered one or created one, uh, this is this is actually a pre-done in, in, in some previous labs. But uh, if, if we're to do that, we could actually reuse that. But in this case, we're going to use a new one so I can show you. The display name is going to be gaming redirect. And again, this is just a simple uh, reminder for me, or this is what is displayed within the workflow. And then we're going to go in and create the redirect for this user. So we're going to put it in Ruckus Wireless. Simple as that. We're going to go down and we're going to kill this session now. So that means that they would not be able to go navigate back or go uh, uh, into it. They're going to actually end that session and so they would have to go reestablish the session to, uh, to create anything new. So we're going to push save to that. And then the important thing to understand is now our result has gone away uh, because of us doing a redirect uh, cloud path identified that you don't want to have a result in this step. And so that has gone away and now we would simply redirect those users to a, the, the URL of, of Ruckus Wireless that I've just created. So now that we've configured this and we have it to where we can actually have users uh, register their Macs and authenticate their Macs, we need to control or, or get, let the controller know that we would have an authentication method of Mac address. So we would be able to go into your controller, and I'm not going to do that here, but do understand that you'll go into your controller, whether it be the gaming uh, setting or whether it be the onboarding, however you want that person to enter into your network, you would basically add Mac authentication or MAC address as an authentication method within that controller. You'll be able to see that under your SSID, your wireless LANs, uh, that configuration would, would allow a device that, that the, the MAC address that was collected by that controller to be reaching out and authenticate to, uh, in this case, the Radius server that's in CloudPath, uh, and then ultimately allow that device to connect and, uh, and go to the, the SSID that you've established or identified that they're supposed to be connecting to. One other thing I like to mention in this process too is, is that if you recall within our, our discussion, uh, 
in the presentation, there is a case that if the MAC address of your controller is encrypted when it's being sent to the RADIUS server, that needs to be set to unencrypt because the, uh, if the, the RADIUS server receives that in an encrypted process, it is not going to be able to read that correctly and so therefore we would not have uh, the proper authentication. Uh, there is some specific information on how you can turn that off. Uh, you can see that in the, the guides and if you can go and review back the material that we had explaining exactly uh, what needs to take place from the standpoint of just simply the MAC address being unencrypted in plain text format when it's sent to the authentication radius server. Now the last thing we need to do for this is we need to publish this. Uh, note that Although we made these changes within the workflow, these changes are not reflected uh, because we have not gone and published this workflow. So now that we've made the changes within the guest user tab you see here, so it's going to be registering the MAC address and the pre-register MAC, so this gives the person an option to go in there and manually configure this, uh, we need to publish. So we're going to go over to the top left over here. This is the workflow we want to upgrade or publish. We're going to click that button. Also notice that, that within when we publish these, you have options of configuring or setting up the most recent uh, wizard version. Now this is the wizard that is used to actually go out and configure the device. Uh, in this case, we're using the newest, but you can select older ones, and that's simply uh, because there might be some conflicts or issues with some of the devices you're connecting. Uh, you can reference that with the release notes and look at the more details on that. Uh, or if it's a case that you upgrade to a newer wizard version and for whatever reason that's not functioning correctly, you can publish uh, and, and go to an older uh, wizard version if you so choose. It's always recommended to use the newest if possible and, uh, and usually those will perform the best for you. So we're going to go ahead and create, push create here. And we can see that snapshot is now being created. So it is working through the process. Again, until we see a green light, that does not, that means that it is not active for us. All right, we now see the green button. And I can now also click on this tab, as you see, in advanced. And so therefore, we can also demo or at least uh, verify or take a look and see what the user's experience is. So we're going to click on this and we can see here's the acceptable use policy. Again, this should flow or follow the same work group or work path that we've just created. So in the case we click on start, now we have three options. We did not touch this one in the lab, so this one will remain the same that it was before. We did, however, change the guest user, but that is a process in which it will actually collect the MAC address and register the MAC uh, of the device that's onboarding. So generally that is performed when the actual device that you're wanting to onboard uh, is the device being used while you're registering, or if you're off-site, or if it's a case the device does not have a, uh, a head uh, or ability or a browser for you to be able to register, you can use a, another device and actually register. And this is what we created with this third option is a pre-registering of the Mac. So we're going to click on that. And as you can see, it's prompting for a Mac address there. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to throw in one of these MAC addresses and show you what it looks like. Once we push continue, it says that hardware has been registered. And then when I click on this, it's going to take us to it. Uh, I am getting a uh, redirect error there. Uh, but it, what it, uh, that is because I'm not actually doing this on the end device. I'm actually doing this as a demo. Uh, so I'm not uh, connected to our, the onboarding wireless and, and being able to forward that. But uh, know that that would redirect them to the URL that you have set up and then ultimately give the person understanding that uh, they can now connect their device uh, and be able to get onto the network. So let's look at our flow again real quick as a final. We have, we have modified the guest user. Uh, we've gone in and had them register the MAC address instead of them having a certificate or getting a specific configuration. 
Uh, and then we've added a third tab here, which is the pre-register Mac. Uh, and as a result, we would have the, the user manually enter their Mac address. Uh, we'll, we'll tell them that that successfully happened. Uh, and then, of course, the gaming redirect that we have there, going, giving them the ability to redirect to a URL. And one last thing I'd like to show you is that these registrations will actually go into the MAC register database. So you saw that we manually entered a MAC address just a moment ago. So I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to go to the dashboard uh, section here. And I'm going to go into users and devices. And you can see when you click on the MAC registration up at the top, this is the actual enrollment that I just used as an example. So now this Mac can be used for authentication uh, and a device coming in can use that and be authenticated on the network. You can also see we can go through and take a look at it in more detail, what exactly took place, uh, the browsers, manufacturers, details of that configuration and what device was used, and we can even go in and revoke it. So we can actually click on this and tell it that we no longer want that MAC address to be used. So we have control over allowing this to continue to be used, uh, and that way we, we would be able to have better uh, management of devices. Uh, if it is a case that we don't want this on the network any longer, naturally we could revoke that, and as a result they would not have to, uh, or they'd not be able to connect, or they'd have to go through a, a new registration. So with that, that is the completion of the Lab 7A. We appreciate you uh, listening in, and uh, we'll be showing you other demonstrations as we go forward. Thank you.